and we're back here, everybody, inside the ropes. And this is a special day for many reasons, not just because we're joined by a fellow countryman, a fellow Scotsman, but also we're joined by the ITR 50 number one from 2020 best wrestler in the world, Mr. Drew McIntyre. Drew, how are you? Absolutely marvelous, Kenny. So close, so close. I'm almost back to the UK, almost back home, almost going to see my family that I've not seen in 18 months, and I'm buzzing. You're buzzing coming home. It's, it's exciting. Coming home. I'm so excited. I think can't even put it into words. It's, it's been 18 months, but it literally feels about three, four years since I've been home. I've seen my nephew twice, who's now three years old. Um, I haven't seen my dad that entire time, my number one fan. Uh, my brother, um, who is my online number one fan. If anyone says a negative word, they've probably had a word with my brother who threatens them online. He's going to show up at their house and battle them. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm excited to see everybody. <laughs> And you're coming to the Hydro, you know, and it's yes. um, it's it's weird because like a couple of months ago, the Hydro was where people were, you know, getting their vaccines and it was being used to kind of get us back to where we need to be. And and now, I mean, I think you guys are the first show back at the Hydro, the first big show on Wednesday, the 22nd of September. It must be like, finally for you, you're getting to come back and, and do a show in front of people as a former WWE champion. Yeah, it's amazing that... Uh, we have this tour as things are getting back to normal. It's amazing that Scotland is on the tour. The Hydro's on the tour. Wasn't it amazing that it was SmackDown? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> wait, I'm on Raw. <laughs> I need to go on this thing. But thankfully, I pulled some strings. Um, I actually got on not just the Glasgow show, but the whole tour. And uh, yeah, I get to travel around my old haunts where I kind of remade my name throughout the UK uh, with Newcastle, London. Cardiff and finishing off where my favorite time was during that period I was away from WWE uh, back in Glasgow, uh, home of ICW, obviously in the Hydro where we put on a big show with ICW and I haven't wrestled there since we're back in WWE for a start and also all the stuff that's happened over the past couple of years. I'm so excited to get back and thank all the fans for just rallying behind me so much and giving me that motivation I needed uh, to finally become you know, WWE champion, first ever Brit, first ever Scott. And those videos from the bars and like the pubs back home and I won the rumble, they can't even put into words how much that motivated me and told me, all right, I'm doing something pretty cool right now. You don't see reactions like that except for like football cup finals or something someone scores in the last minute. <laughs> and even like, you know, the, the, even watching your documentary in the network, you saw your family and how much it meant to them to see what, um, you know, what you went through and getting to win the title of WrestleMania. Um, and you're going to be in a Glasgow street fight in Glasgow. That's the, and I mean, what, what better way to come back than just to beat up Jinder Mahal all across the Hydro? Yeah, poor, poor Jinder. He doesn't even know what's in store for him. It's one thing <laughs> having a street fight in America, but he doesn't know what we got up to in the streets of Glasgow where anything goes. <laughs> like, you, so have anything actually, goes. you have actually wrestled where you did wrestle into the streets in Glasgow once before. Yes, me, myself and Rhino wrestled into the actual streets of Glasgow. We ended up in the national papers <laughs> for batting each other, and Rhino was like, man, you guys are crazy. I was like, yeah, we are crazy. <laughs> we're absolutely <laughs> mental, actually. And poor Jinder, I just feel bad for him. You know, we're, we're such close friends over the years, and Oh, it seems like all my friends turn on me in WWE from, you know, Sheamus and gender. Maybe I'm the problem, but yeah, he's going to get absolutely battered and it's going to be amazing. And we're going to have a big party after all. <laughs> I can't wait. Well, I mean, you also, I know every time you do an interview, this gets asked, but I do need to bring it up again. You've been kind of talking about how you want a UK pay-per-view. You want it to happen. How close did the idea of Drew McIntyre and Tyson Fury get? I know you've kind of said, oh, you know, there, there was maybe an idea of it. Did it ever get close sort of pre-COVID? I mean, we're going back and forth at each other. Um, the the idea is out there. I mean, I don't want to go into too much details, but um, it's basically when the, the uh, pandemic situation happened, it was a case of where let's put a pin in it for now and come back later because something like that can ignite at any second. And the UK pay-per-view idea, that's not something that's ever gone away for me. That's happening one way or another. And for me, um, I don't think we necessarily need it, but for something within the UK... They kind of get the eyeballs that maybe aren't watching WWE right now with a lapsed fan to say, wait a minute, Tyson Fury is fighting that big wrestler that won the WWE title <laughs> to Scotland. Yeah, I want to kind of pay attention to that and like bill it as a battle of Britain or whatever, just like something like that at the top of the card. I'd imagine that'd be uh, something awesome to draw those outside eyeballs and really make a spectacle of the week. I don't see it as a one night event for the UK paper. I see it as a week event. I see it as like weigh-ins and training videos, myself and Tyson throughout the week. This is, again, just a vision I have in my head and leading to that inevitable UK pay-per-view. But realistically, we could have one 
with the Raw and SmackDown rosters right now, and I know it would sell out. I know it would be amazing. I know it would be talked about for years. And since Summer Sun Night 2, how many years has that been we're coming up on now? Like 30 years? 30 years next year, yeah. Yeah, so what more appropriate time than to do it next bloody year? <laughs> it's happening. One way or another, it's happening. Like, that's just like my, my vision right now and the match right now I saw. But with the roster we've got right now, uh, wrestling's got such a buzz again right now in general. Uh, I feel good about our current roster doing it. And if it's me and Fury, then good, because I get to batter him. I've been talking about batter him for a while, and he's been ducking me. He was at one of our shows. He literally avoided me the whole time, and I didn't go out my way to go and get him because he had his family there. I didn't want to smack him around in front of his kids. That's the kind of classy guy you are. You know, you wouldn't do that. No, um, that's a lovely, lovely man. I was like, not in front of your kids, pal. <laughs> Only the streets of Glasgow. have a Glasgow street fight. And you'll find out what, what that's all about when I fight gender and <laughs> chip them. <laughs> um, I mean, so let's talk about what, earlier this year. Finally, you know, the crowds first came back kind of for the one night, for, the two nights for WrestleMania this year. And you got to obviously be in that big match with Bobby Lashley. There was the, the kind of weather issue that uh, was almost halting proceedings uh how was that night for you was it was it as good as you'd hoped when you were sort of i'm sure throughout the thunderdome era just kind of imagining that moment of being able to finally get out there and do it yeah i mean it's obviously aside the the weather issue uh lashley and i were so amped up that when we did those live interviews backstage um, just with no planning, just seeing how you felt in the moment. It is so fortunate that MVP was between us because I was ready to go. Lashley was ready to go. And if he wasn't between us, none of us are kind of guys are going to back down. We would have ended up fighting backstage for real. And they would have had to have separated us. And I can't imagine how many people it would have taken to separate myself and Lashley. But we were ready to fight no matter what. If they said, sorry, the show's cancelled uh, because of the weather, we would have fought backstage for as long as it needed uh, to keep people entertained <laughs> throughout WrestleMania. We were that amped up, but thankfully we got to have the match. It was incredible to get back in front of the fans. Um, at that time, I remember the last thing I thought for a walk through the curtain, I've talked about a few times, was, uh, you know, we've had a lot of Drew in your face uh, over the past year and a half, uh, kind of being the premier guy on Raw and the opening promos and long matches, etc. cetera, and, and the media, and we've seen in the past, the fans can kind of turn on that <laughs> if you get too much of the same thing. Then Lashley, you know, finally um, had reached his potential. I put the last kind of pieces of the puzzle together with himself and MVP and it's really good momentum. So I was curious of that reaction, but to hear such a positive reaction for myself meant the world and also Lashley as well to see him where he was at. And it would have been nice to get the win in front of fans, <laughs> get my title back. But at the same time, uh, you know, we really cemented Lashley as a top player and look where he's at today. You know, since WrestleMania. Um, and for McIntyre, I think it's important for me that I'm not like Superman, like a few of our top baby faces of the past. I got to keep overcoming, overcoming, and find ways to uh, fight and claw my way back to the top. Like right now, I can't compete for the title. How am I going to get back to the top? And I think that's what keeps my story interesting. Because if you look at my real history, nothing ever goes to plan for Drew, including WrestleMania's. One year fighting for the world title, worldwide pandemic. The next year almost get rained out. So just all part of the story. I mean, and I wanted to ask you, you mentioned it about how sometimes you know, the fans can turn on too much of the same thing or whatever. And on Raw, you've kind of fought most people that you could fight. I mean, down the line, are you open to exploring a more villainous side again? Or are you? do you want to kind of stay a, a sort of fan favourite long term? I just go with how the fans react. Um, and I'm just kind of myself most of the times, especially since the fans came back. Obviously, within the uh, Thunderdome and Performance Center, you could kind of explore some different things, try some different things, throw some stuff against the wall, see what would stick from a promo perspective because you're not going to get people walking over the top of you or um, reacting negatively, like perhaps story time with Drew or whatever people refer to as online with Long Nest Monsters. <laughs> would not have gone on well with a live crowd but hey i'm willing to try stuff somebody challenges me backstage to try something different i'm always willing to to try because as the fans have been back you know i'm more comfortable kind of being the real drew seeing how i feel and if the fans are reacting one way i'm going to go that direction i'm just going to kind of do what feels natural and uh, when it comes to the stories etc i'll stay within the confines of the story but if the fans start telling me hey we're not digging this i'm going to go whatever direction feels right and i think that's what it's all about um, but right now, I feel like we're on the right path, and I'm just excited to get back in a significant story, to be honest. Look at the big draft coming up. The rosters are going to get shaken up, going to get some fresh new opponents, and I'm looking forward to that. 
I mean, you know, I'd be remiss to not bring up the big Survivor Series match last year with you and Roman Reigns. People still talk about it. I think people want to see you guys get together again in the ring. Do you think with the draft that would be a good time for you and Roman to sort of pick up again? And is that a match that you want to revisit, given how, you know, well-received it was? Yeah, I definitely want to revisit it. And no, we will revisit it when the time is right. Um, it's so interesting that Survivor Series for that match that had nobody there, we had 10 times more buzz than our WrestleMania match, <laughs> WrestleMania 35, and the roles were completely flipped, where Roman's probably playing a more, is playing a closer version to the real um, person with the volume turned up, as is the case with myself. And with one week build, we were able to cause that kind of buzz. And um, man, I just know there's so much there, and I'm so excited to revisit it. I don't know if, I, I don't know exactly when the draft is. I know it's coming up. Um, probably sooner than later. But I don't know if now's the time to do it. I think I know McIntyre's on his kind of rebuild, uh, trying to you know, get myself back on track. And I don't think the time's to go right after Roman, who's clearly top of the top uh, right now. I think i got to fight, claw, get through some good feuds, get through some good opponents. And when the time is right, walk right out there in front of Roman and say, remember me, and it'll be time to battle once again. I'm just going to get two last questions for you. One that uh, I know a lot of old school fans want to know is, will Broken Dreams ever come back? If you go on YouTube and you type in Drew McIntyre, one of the first things that pops up is Drew McIntyre Broken Dreams, still to this day. Um, is it something that you want to try and bring back in some form? Yeah, I mean, I, get, I say it all the time in every interview I get asked, which is almost every interview. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, eventually it's going to happen. Um, I imagine it's going to be in a bigger event. It might be part of a package. We've done that in NXT prior to my match with Bobby Roode when I won the NXT title. We used a part of it and people were absolutely buzzing. But I see it more like, like maybe a combination like Edge did um, just at SummerSlam there with the brood into his new music. If we could use it in some capacity at the beginning and then cut into the kind of war pipes, which is more suitable for who I am today. But the thing I always say is, everybody, please learn the words. Because if I somehow convince management, we got to use this because it's all the fans love it. They're waiting for it. They've been asking me for it for years. They'll know all the words. And I walk out there and nobody knows the words. You know, singing it like Jericho's song, I'll be devastated. And I'm going to have to go back my tail between my legs going, I was wrong. <laughs> well, there is a message to fans everywhere. Get on the get on the lyrics on Google and, and start learning it. Um, yes. but- Last thing I want to just say to you, obviously, you know, everybody's sending all their well wishes at the moment to Triple H, um, because obviously it came out yesterday that he's recovering from a procedure. I just wanted to ask you about your relationship with Triple H. Obviously, when you came back to WWE, he was a big part of you being in NXT, and just kind of how important that relationship has been for you. I wouldn't be back in WWE if it wasn't for Triple H. That's as simple as that. Uh, William Regal put me on the phone with him. We talked for 40 minutes, and within that conversation at the beginning, I wasn't sure if I was going to come back. I was honestly leaning more towards Japan. And by the end of it, I was 100% coming back. And the thing that meant the most to me was not just that he said how far I'd come professionally, but how far I'd come as a man and kind of how proud he was of me. And I kind of meant a lot because I have so much respect for him. And it's grown into a friendship today. And, you know, he really is somebody who's like not just a friend to a lot of people, but a father figure to a lot of people. And again, the news caught everybody kind of off guard, but he's got a lot of positive energy coming his way right now. And he's going to be fine. Uh, which I'm very happy to hear. Well, listen, um, obviously the big UK tour, the Hydro on the 26th of September, I'm going to be there. I'll try and keep my chants PG friendly and not the some of the usual Glasgow chants to get a bit filthy with the mouth, but who am I kidding? Wait, wait, if, I don't, yeah, if I don't hear and hear we have and go during my match, I'll be pretty upset. <laughs> Well, listen, I'll, I'll start it, I promise. Uh, you can go to WWE.com to get tickets, obviously, for all the UK uh, tour dates. And, Drew, um, I'm looking forward to seeing you beat the crap out of gender. Oh, I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm just going to get chipped big style. If anyone wants to bring me anything, I'm, I'm not going to encourage people. I was thinking of the big man with his phone with a Stanley on top of it. I'm not going to encourage people. They'll actually do it in Scotland. <laughs> so just enjoy the match. <laughs> just enjoy the match. <laughs> just that. <laughs>